Hey, here we are once again. Yeah, we're back. What the hell day is it today? Tuesday? Uh, Tuesday, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Duh, it says right there on my desk. It just goes to show Tuesday. my fucking brain is so fried. I don't know what day it is. Tuesday, anymore. and we're just warming up for the show. <laughs> Yeah, just doing kind of a another little brief one today because I guess we did a long one yesterday because we talked about dark and I kind of got all off on that because I was geeking out about it. Um, but do another matinee show because we did actually watch a new movie on Netflix last night called The Night Clerk. Yeah, Night Clerk was pretty good. I not too it. bad actually. Uh, not a horror movie. It was more like a thriller mystery type thing, sort of. Yeah, drama kind of. Um, but, you know, so before we get into talking about that, I've been meaning to do like a couple of shout outs on here. And I meant to do it like the yesterday and the day before. And I forgot, even though I had them written down right here on my little page. But so I'm going to shout out. I'll shout out on the main episode, too, like I usually do. But I wanted to thank our newest patron, Mark. So hello and welcome. Also, while we're talking about Patreon, a newer uh, patron, Sydney, who just doubled their support. So thank you very much for that. Also, thank you, Logan, for your PayPal donation. And thank you, Louie, for sending us the movies we got. Yeah. Terminator Blu-ray. Yeah. And we got... Oh, whoops. The Secret in Their Eyes, which I've heard is actually very good. I have not seen it yet. So thank you very yeah, much for that, you guys. <clears throat> yeah, and we'll be, on awesome. we'll be on Patreon for as long as Patreon exists. I heard they're getting their asses sued off right now. For what? Um, they were, they did something wrong. They changed terms of service on somebody after they did some action against them or whatever. And it, if they, they're probably going to lose that lawsuit. And if it does, it opens up for suit for fucking thousands of other, uh, patrons. And some people have said it take years, but yeah, it usually does. That. This might fucking, way, like. this might fold Patreon. They did. They would kind of do what they did was, is they, they, Spend, they started suspending accounts, all right, but the accounts didn't violate terms of service. So then they, they then those a uh, couple of those accounts, one main one sued, and after the lawsuit hit, Patreon then changed the terms of service to to, to defend themselves against the lawsuit, which made it worse. Yeah, no. So there's a couple of lawsuits going on them. All I've heard, and, all I've heard lately, I don't know if it has anything to do with that, but they started um, making them, I guess, to comply with new laws that they started making them have to charge sales tax on particular yeah, that's tiers. Yeah, that's not the problem. That's yeah. the only thing I've this heard. This problem about. had to do with them kicking people off the platform and they didn't violate the terms of service. And then they changed the terms of service after lawsuits, you know. To try to cover their asses, evidently they didn't. They didn't well, like that. I can't comment. I haven't heard right. anything about so that. Right. We'll, so, like we'll I said, just all, all I've heard about is the there'll thing. be other things if we have to meet, leave Patreon. Yeah, I'm, I don't worry about that kind of shit. Until, yeah, until it happens. Well, yeah, because you know, you you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like people can say anything. Looks like we finally stopped lagging. For yeah. some reason, the first couple minutes of the show fucking lags badly. I have no idea why. What are you talking about? It's not lagging. That's yeah. just we. Was, we but, I know. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I just said we move really slowly before yeah. the thing starts. <laughs> oh, he says I started watching Dark last night. I found it slow and hard to understand. Is well, it is hard to understand. I will say that. Um, and it's more like you said. It's more a drama than it has horror elements. It has crime elements. It has sci-fi elements. But it's not like an action movie or anything like that. So I mean, it depends on. I mean, most people I know like loved it. So it depends on what kind of thing you like. Like, it's not super action packed. It's more story based. You yeah. know what I'm saying? If you don't like it so far, you're not going to like it. Probably not because it no. just gets more and more complex yeah. as it goes on and gets harder to like. If you found the first uh, season hard to understand, then by the time the second and third one roll around, you're going to have no idea what's going on. <laughs> you could always go watch Star, uh, Star Trek Enterprise in a Mirror Darkly 1 and 2. <laughs> That's a good time travel story. You'd like that one. We're just gonna. It's not quite as long because I mean, no. I mean, it's dark, only two episodes. Yeah, I mean, dark. That's like it's yeah. three seasons and they're like eight eight yeah. hour episodes each. So that's like yeah. really really long. So yeah, so let's talk about briefly about this uh, new movie on Netflix. It's called The Night Clerk, and I guess it just came to the platform like in early June. Although I think it was actually released in February of this year, but it is technically a 2020 <coughs> movie. 
So this has like some fairly famous people in it. it had uh, Anna de Armas, who was in uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and it yeah, she's out. cute as hell in this. She is. She's she's adorable. She's a beautiful yeah. woman. Um, also, John Leguizamo in this. Uh, yeah. Helen Hunt is in this, and uh, Ty Sheridan, who plays the main character. Now, this is kind of an interesting conceit. I don't know if I've seen anything quite like this. But the, basically the setup of it is, is that Ty Sheridan plays this guy named Bart and he is the night clerk at a hotel and he suffers from Asperger syndrome. Yeah. Um, so he has like all of these, you know, let's call them personality quirks where he's not very good at like, you know, um, maintaining conversations with people. He doesn't know like when he's not supposed to say something, you know, he's very socially awkward. Says fucked up stuff. But uh, Tells which, people they're obese, <laughs> which is was actually very funny. Yeah. One thing that I liked about this because it's really hard, I guess, for an actor to play a character that has a disability like this without making it seem like they're making fun of them or going too far over the top. I think that I think this performance just skirts that line. I don't. I don't. You don't get the sense that he's making fun of him. Um, it is like it is a very uh, sympathetic portrayal. But a lot of the comedic stuff in the film, it's not a comedy, but there is like a lot of funny, like awkward, like cringe kind of funny stuff comes from his inability to interact with others, but it, not in a way that it's like making fun of him necessarily. I did kind of laugh when he was going to buy the new clothes and like he asked that old man that was helping him out, like, was he's like, would you wear these pants? And the old man was like, yeah, I'd wear them. And he's like, well, then I don't want those. And he's yeah. like, well, why not? He's like, because you're old. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you're, everyone thinks it, but no one says it out yeah. loud. But he says it out loud. I thought it was an okay performance from him. It wasn't, yeah. to, it wasn't totally uh, believable. I mean, you, yeah, you it know, went a little, that's what I mean. It went a little over the top. You're not talking about Dustin Hoffman and Rain Man. But it was, like, well, you know, it wasn't that bad. Least, it wasn't that <laughs> Well, that was a great performance by Dustin Well, I Hoffman. thought that was a little. Actually. From Dustin Hoffman? Yeah. No, I, actually, I, I think that, think it was, I yeah, think that was I think that was a great performance by Dustin Hoffman. This one, uh not it's just adequate. It's, yeah. it's not that kind of movie. You're talking about Hollywood C listers mostly in this movie. Doing good work um on a low budget flick with a decent story. Um weird shit happens in it. Uh the ending. It's good, but a little bit underwhelming. The, that was the, the kind movie of, was kind of realistic in a, in a way. Yeah, that was kind right. of one of the problems that I was like, I like, I actually liked this movie, and I kept kind of, I was kind of invested. It's not very long; it's only it's about an hour and a half, uh, I think, on the nose. But basically, so he works at a night as a night clerk in this hotel, and um, he witnesses a murder um, because what ends up happening is that he has installed cameras in all of in not all the hotel rooms but in some of the hotel rooms and apparently it's not for like perverted like jack off material but because he's interested in watching people so that he can learn to mimic them so he can like you know learn to um relate to other people better because he's like you you see him like repeating what they're saying and repeating their gestures and facial expressions so he's trying to like make himself better at social social interaction by watching people when they don't know they're being watched which, like I said, that's a very questionable because it's very, very illegal for a hotel to have uh, cameras in there like that, like in the bedrooms and bathrooms and everything. But he doesn't seem to be, you know, he comes across as a little creepy, but not, he's not really aware that he's being creepy because he doesn't think that, that that's a, a bad thing to do. Yeah. He doesn't really have a concept that he's like invading yeah. people's privacy because for him, it's not like a sexual thing or a perverted thing. It's just, he's just observing people to see how they behave so he can mimic it. So he ends up uh, seeing a murder or you think that he, well, he does witness a murder, but you don't really know exactly like who committed it um, until later. Cause they leave it a little bit ambigu ambiguous, ambiguous. Um, but then it turns out that because he had footage of the murder happening uh, because of the cameras and the thing. So he doesn't want to go to the police about it. So, but police think he did it because yeah, he becomes a suspect. Because he becomes a suspect yeah. because of his weird behavior. And like, because of the shit yeah. that he did, like in the wake of the murder, he was, he had a lot of stuff to hide and they knew he was hiding something. They thought he was involved right. in the murder. And there's really, and he ends up meeting a girl later on too. Who's, who's the girl from Blade Runner that look cute. Yeah. All right. I'm calling her a girl. She's probably 35. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, to me, they all start looking pretty young. 
at my age. <laughs> so anyway, uh, she shows up and kind of like this weird kind of romance kind of starts between the two. It's there, you can't really you can't really say much more about the movie. Yeah, because it'll kind of spoil it'll, it. it'll spoil the movie. It's it's free. That was YouTube, right? No, Netflix. I mean uh, Netflix. I mean yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's free on, on Netflix. So well, you know, I mean, if you pay for a Netflix, if you, if you have Netflix subscription, that's free. But it's Most free people on Netflix. will do, I guess. So uh, you know, but it's a decent one. It's I will decent. say that it's like I liked the conceit of it. I liked the humor of it. Um, I would have liked the mystery to be a little bit more mysterious. I'll yeah. say that because I do feel like even though they did leave some stuff like kind of ambiguous, like oh, we don't, we're not quite sure who did this, or quite sure what happened, or anything like that. But then. I feel like it was a little predictable. Like I was expecting more twists and turns than actually occurred. Yeah. But like you said, in a way it was kind of more realistic. It wasn't yeah. kind of one of these crazy thrillers where like all this like implausible shit happens. You know? Tone of the movie, the way it's shot, the visuals, the way it looks, <laughs> it reminded me of, it's, it's in that same family of movies that um, Art of Self-Defense is in. Yeah. Well, you, you say that about every movie well, that very, has like a nerdy main yeah. character. <laughs> Well, it has, like that, a it, has, maker. it has a contemporary feel to it to yeah. me, though. It feels like a 2020s movie. Yeah. There's a certain kind of tone that, that they have. Like this, like the way 80s movies have. Yeah. There's just something about the way that it looks. I don't know if it's because it's not shot. I, yeah, it was probably shot on film. I don't it, know if really that it, many people shoot on film is anymore, it? to be okay. honest Because it, it felt kind of like hd video but because every time they the every way, time somebody films like on actual yeah. film like the lighthouse or something yeah. like that they make like a big, big deal about, about it yeah. so i don't i don't know if anyone is actually shooting it tried to make anymore. it look like it was shot on film i think I but but it's just weird to, i don't know it's filters i guess it's digital but they're using certain yeah filters, there's a lot of just, shit you can do with that nowadays. right the okay. interesting thing is the production company behind this is Sabin Films, Saban, Saban whatever they're do the, the Power Rangers. They, yeah, they started out with Power Rangers, but they've actually started making like all the, they did Guns Akimbo as well. That was a pretty good movie. Which some, I, yeah, which I actually really liked. Yeah, there was some. We had some listener in the comment section going, "Don't watch that. That movie sucked." Man, that movie is pretty good. I liked it. I actually liked it. Yeah, it's but just, you know, that's well, that's the thing. It's like everybody's you know opinions everybody's are like opinions assholes. Are everybody's right. got one. For um, me, for me, movies are just entertainment, and I thought that was pretty entertaining. And a lot of times, yeah. like I, I like movies that other people don't like, or yeah. you know, I like things that other people don't. It's like you know what I mean. And it's like I'm not going to tell people, you know, oh, you don't like X Y Z movie, you're wrong because that's dumb. It's a subjective opinion. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like if you have a reason for not to actually, you don't even have to have a reason for not liking something. If you just be like, man, eh, not for me, whatever. It's like I'm not going to fucking argue with that about. It with you about it why would i do that yeah. like i used to know this i used to work with this guy a long time ago he was like an older guy and uh he was like super super into movies and like you know i i am too so we would talk about that kind of shit but he was kind of one of those dudes where if you didn't like you know this classic movie or if you didn't feel the same way about it that he felt then you were just wrong and yeah. he was just going to like berate you and like argue with you until you like submit it you know what yeah. i mean <laughs> which to me is just a pointless exercise because you know, you're not going to get everybody to like everything. And some people, even though I think some people's opinions are stupid about particular movies, but you know, there's nothing you can do about it because right. everybody just likes what they like. And, um, you know, so this movie, like I said, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's nothing. It's kind of like a, just a throwaway fun kind of mystery thriller, you know, mid tier type of thing. Yeah. Not, crazy over the top it's not like some convoluted like crazy lifetime movie that goes from, like all these we're all this wacky although i like this i do too sometimes what was the one about the pervy old man fucking perving out on a black couple we saw that one in the fucking theater oh right 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 and yeah people were going, that's like a lifetime movie so yeah what the shit. fuck was that the I, intruder was intruder that what it was called like that yeah that I thought, was i thought this shit was well cool. the thing about it it's like that could have just been another like throwaway yeah. that oh that was an okay mystery thriller but because it was so like yeah. campy and yeah. so over the top that it almost like became super awesome again. yeah I just, thought <laughs> just it was awesome. because i don't want to say it what's was, that what's that fucking what's that actor's name uh guy? dennis quaid was dennis quaid yeah i think it was dennis it was dennis quaid He's trying to be as pervy as possible. Look around the corner, but oh yeah, with all his like creepy like, <laughs> like his 
<laughs> his Grinch stole Christmas face that he had, like with the fucking smile. That's exactly what yeah. it reminded me of. It reminded when I was me in the theater, face. man. I was, we we saw that on the big screen. It was effective to me. I was like going, yeah, it's, yeah. Well, I, I felt like I felt like we went to see that, and I think we went to see that at night, which we didn't usually. And so there was like quite a few people in there, and I feel like everyone was kind of like having a good time with yeah. it. Yeah. Is yeah. that you just can't take shit like that too seriously. Nah. Like I said, it's just like those lifetime movies yeah. that they, they have an element of camp or, um, you know, just kind of this over the top uh, earnestness to them that you can't help but like laugh at. But it also like makes them it reminded entertaining. Me, it reminded me of that one that we saw back in the very late 80s, early 90s. Who is the guy that played the Batman out of fucking the old fucking Batman fucking shit? Wait, the Tim Burton Batman? Yeah. Michael Keaton? Michael Keaton. Had Michael Keaton in it. He was living oh, downstairs oh, oh. and letting the cockroaches go. And was fucking, that Pacific Heights? I think it was Pacific Heights. There was a bunch that came yeah. out like that. Like, well, in the wake of- He's trying to fuck of, up the house and shit. Because remember, like the 90s was like a really big like killer thriller yeah, mystery yeah, type yeah. of thing. She had like fucking Fatal Attraction, yeah, Single yeah, White yeah. Female, it was like, and it was like that. Like all those types of movies. Yeah. I feel like ever like the late 80s to or, like <laughs> mid 90s were like a yeah. really big time for that. Yeah, well, because they were new or kind of new. Yeah, I mean it's a genre that's been around forever. But they but brought that shit back. That was kind strong. of like the new Pacific Heights. That's what it was. I'm pretty sure it was Pacific Heights, even they, though there there was more than one. They rent like the basement apartment. Yeah, out yeah, to yeah. Him. And then he starts bringing in cockroaches and fucking rats, and then starts like suing do. them and making their life fucking hell. He tried. A bit, I think he was trying to take the house from him, wasn't he? Yeah. What was his motivation? Was he just a nutcase, or did he have some other? I think there was. A, he was trying to take agenda. the house. Off. I think he was trying to take the house. It away. might have been something like that because yeah. I, I feel like you can't just have even yeah. if it's a convoluted agenda, you have to have an agenda in these movies. Yeah. You can't just be like, "Well, they're crazy." Yeah. Sometimes crazy people do crazy people things. <laughs> yeah, that Dennis Quaid flick reminded me of that. It did. Yeah, it did kind of. Yeah. Now I haven't seen Pacific Heights in a long time, so I don't know how over the top that is. I would have Pacific to see Heights it again. Probably over the top. Didn't probably. that have? Didn't Single that have, white female was too, but I really, really didn't I that love have the Demi Moore in it. God, Pacific Heights wasn't it? Demi was Moore? she in that? I don't think so. I, I thought it was like one of the big fucking um, it girls from the fucking nineties. I think it might have been was... Demi Moore. Because I remember she was like super hot for like a couple years, Man, and then she I... did GI Jane. That was the end of her career. Yeah, she, they're like, well, shouldn't have shaved your head. That's yeah. the end of that. Um, yeah, well, shit, was it? I want to say no, but I can't really remember because, Maybe like it I was said, Kim Bassinger <sighs> was somebody that like sounds it. more correct. You remember Hand That Rocks yeah. the Cradle with Rebecca De Mornay? Uh, I remember liking I remember it because that was there was that was a whole subgenre of those type yeah. of movies. It was like the crazy bitches, yeah, kind of thing. Like I said, that was kind of single white female fatal attraction. Like right. the, the bitches be crazy offshoot yeah. <laughs> of the thrillers. <laughs> in a way, in a way, this one is kind of like those, but not quite as intense. It's, yeah, it, it needed a little bit. The, the way this movie ended wasn't quite good enough. I think it was. Yeah, like, it was a little bit. It was too realistic. It didn't yeah. fucking. It should have. It should have gone over the top. Because I thought that a. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm not going to give anything away if anybody wants to watch it, but. There were a couple times when I thought, oh, they're going to do this twist or they're yeah. going to do that. And then they didn't do it. They didn't do it. Right. So I was just kind of like, oh, okay. So it's it's not like a mystery thriller with a bunch of twists. It's just like a mystery thriller. And you think there's going to be twists and there's really kind of not. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Should have come out like, oh, that dude was never autistic to begin with. <laughs> or, you know, at the very end, you know. Like, twist. That's how I would have done it. You know, I would have really, really fucked, he's an yeah. android and from it turned space. Out, turned out he was also a woman. <laughs> I'd do that some shit. I'd do some shit like that. And too. a Bigfoot. And, and a Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> why don't they let me write movies? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly why they don't let me write movies. Yeah. That's a stupid fucking idea. Also, and also he was a shark all along. Yeah. Uh Melanie Griffith, somebody said. Was yeah. it Melanie Griffith? I feel like it was more it was Melanie Griffith. Melanie Griffith was in Pacific Heights? More than I I feel about? like that's more likely than Demi Moore. She, yeah, well, she just um, who was in sleep? Sandra said it was Melanie Griffith. Yeah, that's what I was okay. looking at. That's and, and, why I was and looking she, at. And she's talking about Pacific Heights. Yeah, right. I know. Okay. okay, that's what I said. Melanie I Griffith. said that sounds more. That sounds yeah. more correct than anything we came up with. Yeah. Like I said, without looking at Wikipedia, I'm not really sure. Her who best, her best role is in Cherry 2000, though. I don't know. I did. I thought I she, I like Cherry 2000, yeah. but I thought she was really wooden in that. A little bit, but I liked it. 
I like I like I liked her in the car and the fucking. And in the fact, outfit. you and you want to hear something she's funny? She's like the Mad Max. I hadn't seen that movie since the early nineties. Yeah. Um, or whenever it came out, like I saw it because I. Sure, two thousand. Yeah, late eighties. I think it was eighty nine. Well, I mean, I think I saw it in nineteen ninety or nineteen ninety one. Okay on cable uh actually my brother had a punk band back then that was named after that movie but um it, it, in fact she i perceived her as being so wooden in that movie that when we watched it again i could have sworn that she was the robot <laughs> like i thought i thought that was the story no, that what, she was the robot instead really, of the person that was going to find the part for the robot <laughs> what i think that, i think they went snake fliskin with her and she was basically trying to do a female version of fucking uh a fucking Mel Gibson, yeah, Mad Max, or maybe like a female version of fucking Clint Eastwood, May, well, with her voice. I guess, I but I didn't. I didn't really get where that everything's vibe. real monotone. Everything is real monotone. Maybe it's just because she was too cute to pull that off. Yeah, I think maybe what is is what it is. It was they just, needed they needed someone with a little more like gravitas, maybe a bit older. Or, yeah, but that movie was supposed to be fun. It was just true. A fun silly That's movie. true. It was like on. Really, that was more inspired by fucking uh, uh, what was what's uh, what's the name of that one something Hunters in the Forbidden Zone, Adventures in the Space Hunter, Adventure in the Forbidden Zone. They had Molly Ringwald and that other guy. It was like, see, oh, you were like, talking about that the other day. Yeah, and I, wanna, I still don't know what you're talking I haven't about. Seen, you haven't seen that movie? I don't. I gotta think buy so. that movie. I mean, I've seen so many movies. It I was like a cross between Star Wars and Mad Max. Yeah. Dude with a spaceship lands on a Mad Max planet. And he meets Molly Ringwald and she's just a scavenger. And they go out looking for something in the, in the forbidden zone. It's where a bunch of, I don't know, cyborgs and shit. I, guess, and I, was like, <laughs> I don't know, cyborgs. Well, shit. it was like barbarians <laughs> and uh, was Mad Max shit. Well, <laughs> sometimes I get that Jason Sin and the fucking Metal Storm. That metal Jet, destruction just of, of Jared, Jason, Sin. Jared Sin and shit. That had cyborgs in it and Mad Max too. I kind of remember that movie, but like yeah. there were so 3D. many, there were so many that they all kind of yeah. like <laughs> munched together, like in the late eighties, like there were so many post-apocalyptic. Yeah. Kind of. But in those two, at least they were wrecking shit. They built some vehicles and they wrecked them. Yeah. Got to yeah. wreck shit. You got to wreck shit. Yeah. Oracle yeah. Munn says Melanie Griffith, Matthew Modine was the guy. Thank you very much. I was trying to remember who that was. And Michael Keaton. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. feel like there was another movie that came out around the same time. Wasn't there? What? Okay. What about Arlington Road? Wasn't that similar? That. I mostly with Tim remember, Robbins. I mostly remembered like, or, fatal, or, is, or am I just like remembering Fatal that, Attraction? Like I'm a crazy and person. Fatal Attraction and Cape Fear. And yeah, yeah. And God, there Pacific were so Heights many. Holy shit, time. we could do a whole show about like all those like crazy thrillers that came out in the nineties, like really like Basic Instinct and all of that stuff. Cape Fear was one of De Niro's best movies. Yeah, you know, he, I think he did a fucking great job. Uh, in that movie, being that convict, we're gonna but have to watch that. Even though he's again. turned into a crazy old man, <laughs> we're gonna have to not... watch that again. I think, I think <laughs> Netflix, or I just saw it like on Netflix or Tubi or something like that. They just added it like not too long ago. Netflix just added like a whole bunch of older movies, which yeah. I thought was kind of neat. They added the, <laughs> they added fucking Clash of the Titans from 1981. Yeah. I was so excited, although I probably have memorized that movie at this point i've seen it so there's a lot times. of a lot of stuff on there they're bringing back <laughs> yeah so they put silence of the lambs on there they put all kind of shit on there all right so uh we've gone on almost half an hour yeah. about this movie but like i said it's you know it's a it's a fine throwaway thriller kind of movie with a little bit of a twist because it has like you know an aspie as the main character and uh all yeah, that see, that entails beth knows what i'm talking about she loves space hunter Okay, it yeah. It had Michael Ironside in it also. He was yeah, he was a bad guy. In that. See, I don't remember. I, gotta get, I might have seen that. I want to get Space Hunter, Space Hunter on fucking Blu-ray. That uh um Metal Storm, that one from Blu-ray was like fucking 30 or 40 bucks. I'm not paying that much for that piece of shit. Well, yeah. That movie was not that it's, great. It's a collective I just wanted item. to see it because it's something you kind of grow up with and you're like, you want I'm going to see that bitch again. Yeah. It, it's it was fucking terrible. But it, it, that movie didn't even make sense, uh, 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 Metal Storm. But I still, it had a lot of good fucking wrecks in it. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug, it's, I'm nostalgia saying. Nostalgia is because a hell of a like, drug. Because it's like, even movies that I objectively, that are objectively terrible, if I saw them, not always, because sometimes I saw them when they were, when, uh, you know, when I was a kid and I loved them and then I saw them when I was older and I was like, wow, that sucks. Yeah. Um, but sometimes there are some movies like, 
Grease 2. Yeah, that are better. Which I saw when I was yeah. a kid and loved it. And then I was afraid to watch it again. I'm like, oh, I, I bet I'm not going to like it as no, much. But I did. Yeah, yeah. It's terrible, but I still love it. Yeah. There's, uh, what was that other one? <laughs> There's another one that I fucking loved it when I was a kid. And then I fucking, paid, <laughs> I think I paid fucking 25 or $30 for, for it on Blu ray. Trancers. Yeah. And then I got Trancers. And the first five minutes of it is okay. That's what makes all the impression on you. And then that movie doesn't make any fucking sense. Then that's not even a movie. It was just a bunch of shit. It was fucking, kind of a collection. It's of a collection of scenes, scenes. strung together. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck is this? Well, we filmed this, so let's yeah. just kind of what the fuck is this? Movie? Massage it into a. It didn't film. make any fucking sense, and I'm not sure it made sense back in the '80s. I mean, but I thought it made sense. I, you know. Back then, I thought it made sense. It didn't make any fucking sense. Were you, in fact, high when you watched it? Not that I remember. I mean, I was high off and on. In the 80s. <laughs> I was just but at the time say. that I was watching it, you know, me and my boys have watched it. I mean, that. we very well we might watched have been it. High. We liked it. You know, like, yeah, yeah. But chances are, we probably only watched the first 10, 15 minutes of it and then talked through the rest of it. I think that's kind of what happens a lot because it's yeah. like, yeah, you run into a movie with your buddies and stuff. Yeah. And sometimes you'd be watching and be like, yeah, this is awesome. But then you'd like start doing other start shit. Talking and then, start yeah. talking and, and then, yeah. And then you look back at it and something happens and then you're, yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. See, I but you miss all the like boring shit. Yeah, I think that that's what happened. Over. I think that might have been what happened. <laughs> but what's funny is that they made like seven of those. They, did they? Yeah. Seven? Yeah, the guys that were involved in it fucking started to uh, like, well, uh, kept first running one, with it. The kind of like, kind of like Phantasm, you know. It was like yeah. it was privately owned, and they just kept raising money like, to make more you know, and more. Well, of them. the first one only cost like two dollars and fifty cents yeah. to make, so, so might as well make, make like a whole bunch. Of them. Makes you wonder: did it get better or did it get worse? Um, I I would bet a substantial amount of money that it's that second thing. That yeah, they, that they got worse. Yeah, I mean, they almost always get worse. How could that get worse, though? Don't ask that question. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there's always a way Damn. you always think that like a movie that you see is like, there's no way this could possibly be worse. And then somebody out there somewhere is like, Hey, hold my beer. I'm going to make like a worse one than that. Oh, so what movie we talking? We're talking about transfers, 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 <laughs> transfers was a movie that I, I thought it was the way we remembered. It was like Blade Runner. Well, you were really talking it up and I don't, I didn't think yeah. that I had ever seen it. So you paid like 20 something dollars. So yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Movie, and then I'm watching it. I'm like, I'm like what, what the, the fuck is this? You? And then after it, was good, after it was over, Jenny was like, so did you, did you like that movie? I went, no, <laughs> <laughs> that shit fucking sucked. <laughs> it, we like, thought it was told, like, you told me this was awesome. We, we remembered it like Blade Runner. That's how we considered it back it in the day. It was really not like Blade Runner. And what it was, not it, it was, well, they had some guys that were kind of like Blade Runners. They were like private dicks from the fucking... That's some sort of crazy shit, huh? They're like private <laughs> eyes. They were like private eyes. Well, it's better than being a public dick, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that shit. <laughs> they were like private eyes from the future. Okay. And private they were looking... Eyes. Yeah. And they were looking for people in the past. And they traveled into the past not by going through a time vortex, but by taking this weird drug that would make their consciousness shift to their ancestors. And they would wake up in one of their ancestor, one of their ancestors bodies and then go look for, uh, so they did it through their DNA somehow. Yeah, that does not sound like a good time. And then they would, <laughs> so you could just be a random dude in the here and now. Wake and all of a sudden you just, you someone wake else up is like, Hey, whose you, consciousness is Yeah. There? And then you're like, get out of there. Whoa, you know, one of my fucking, uh, Descendants has now possessed me, basically, and then they started dressing like they dressed in the future. When they and in the future they dressed kind of like something out of the forties, hats and the fucking trench coats and fucking ray guns and smoking a lot. And uh, they were going out looking for criminals that were hiding in the past. That's what it was. Yeah, and they were doing it the same way. They were escaping into their ancestors by using this fucking injection. It's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. I mean, it's and a good idea. And they were coming, going back in the past to try to get him. To, to, to like arrest him somehow. Yeah. Or to, to kill him. And Although, that was, that was that's the premise it, That of the seems movie. like that's opening up a whole new can of worms. It's like, well, you can't like, how do you bodily put a person in jail yeah. like because of something that their future yeah. person did and their consciousness is in the body, but that's not their body. So it's like, that's not really Well, fair. in the future, these, uh, these trancers, okay, these guys that were going into the past to hunt down these escaped criminals they gave two shits about whether whose body you're in 
There's like whatever. They kill, yeah, they didn't give a shit. Body, we're just putting this one in yep. jail. No, they would just no, they would kill you. Oh, they okay. fucking had ray guns. Well, that just solves that problem. Disintegrate <laughs> you. Yeah. You probably did something too. Whatever. No, they didn't care. <laughs> like in the future, things were real. Uh, fucking. Uh, I guess you could say it was futuristic and real brutal. Like the human life didn't really have a whole lot of value, and they didn't. And things weren't really run by law or justice. It was in, as as you would know it. It was kind of like. Kind of like um, Judge Dredd, you know, yeah. from fucking where they were judge, jury, and executioner type guys. But what the movie ended up being was dudes in their fucking sixties, sixties running around trying to fucking having having love scenes with girls in their twenties. That's what the fucking movie. so like they're, most movies from the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> he's sixty, and she's twenty. Yeah, there's like some eighteen year old. Girl yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It was like that's like making out with your dad or your yeah. grandpa, granddad. Yeah. So nasty. Oh, uh, we just well, they were the ones fi- they were the ones financing the movie, so it was up, you know. Well, yeah, they paid. And hired like, these we girls. Wanna, we You're want to make out with me. We I'm want to mac on all the high we're school ma- graduates. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> let's call it. Let's call it what it is. <laughs> that's the way it was. Well, yeah, still is that way. They just hide it. I wanted to say we uh, got a message from somebody named Martin Fullwood that said uh, that said, "Hey guys, I'm new to your channel. So hey, oh, how you doing? Welcome. Yep, I'm talking about transfers." <laughs> Even though that wasn't what we started out talking no. about, but uh, you know, since you're new to the show, that's kind of what always happens because we never really script any of this shit. So it's like you never know what we're going to talk about because we don't know what we're going to talk about half the time. Sometimes we start. Yeah, Jack Death. That's what his name was, and he says there's six of them, and the best one is the first one. God, yeah, that's see? fucking horrible because that first one was terrible. Yeah, so bad they're good. I wonder if there's th- if there's a riff tracks. There. I would imagine because um, riff tracks, they I mean they must never sleep or anything because yeah. they have a riff tracks for like yeah everything. everything. Holy crap! Good movies, bad movies, indifferent movies. They've done a riff tracks for pretty yeah. much everything. Jag Death, that's right. And they had those fucking corny, corny fucking. Uh, private eye outfits they were always wearing fucking with the big wide ties and the fucking zoot suits hats and yeah it was almost kind of like a damn zoot suit big show because they were trying on. to do the neo-noir thing. yeah the neo-noir was kind of like a zoot suit that they were wearing and fucking blade runner cars and shit they showed them from the future remember that song zoot scenes. suit riot yeah by the cherry popping daddies yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't imagine that the other that the other five were fucking worse than one. One was like I said, incoherent. It like was I said, incoherent. don't ever say that it's like, how can a movie be worse than that? It can always, always be worse. They didn't know how to write a story. That shit there is like, no bottom of yeah. the barrel. It just, uh, the barrel just keeps going down forever. He's laughing at the fucking <laughs> trench coats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big ass fucking trench coats. <laughs> they were fucking tan trench coats. I think they had shoulder pads in them. Dude had like a fucking they like grim hat, like a, like a fucking zoot suit. <laughs> kind of looked like uh, kind of looked like Gaff from Blade Runner, but but more ridiculous. And uh, uh-huh. they showed him in the future. They had diners and shit, like nineteen fifties diners. And fucking, I remember that's the only thing. That the I only scene about was what in the future that that. that kind of stuck was with the me. diner scene the that's, diner uh, scene. well and we just saw it like yeah. probably six months ago and that's literally the only thing and, I remember. yeah and the first one opens up with that diner scene and for some reason that scene fools you into thinking that you like this movie <laughs> you know what i'm talking about <laughs> it hypnotizes you somehow. yeah yeah there's the some rest kind of the movie like, there's no there's nothing there the rest of the movie <laughs> there's some kind of like subliminal message yeah. in the first five this is a very good movie is, you will yeah, sit yeah, and yeah. watch it yeah you will sit and watch the rest of this shit and then it never <laughs> And it never happens again. And it never happens again. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I wonder if anybody's like experimented with doing that kind of shit in the movie. <laughs> then it's like you could just have like fucking stupid shit. 30 minutes of or you know, an hour and a half of like white noise, and it would be yeah. like, This is the best movie yeah. ever made. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the lazy way to make movies. All right. So uh all right, let's uh wrap this show up. We'll probably do another live stream again tomorrow, either a sidetracks or if we find another new movie that we want to watch, might watch that tonight and review it as well. But like I said, if you have Netflix and you don't have anything pressing to do and you have an hour and a half to kill and would like to see a thriller mystery that's fairly entertaining, then uh, you could certainly do worse than The Night Clerk. And like yeah. I said, got some good acting in it. I, so I always like to see John Leguizamo. He's a cool guy. And, uh, you know, Anna de Armas is on. Yeah, fucking John getting fucking beat up by fucking... Life? 
No, by fucking like Seagal. We all are. Steven Seagal. That's right. Remember that? Yeah. He's an amazing man. <laughs> Poor John Leguizamo. What Although I, say, I have to what say. I, what I say is law. <laughs> I have to say that made so me long. love John Leg- Leguizamo even more when yeah. he actually laughed at Steven Seagal's yeah. face like for saying that because it's because that's why would it, what I would have done too because that yeah, is like, every normal person knows that that's a ridiculous thing to say to somebody yeah. else yeah and uh and the fact that Steven Seagal would actually beat up John Leguizamo who is considerably smaller than him yeah um you know what I mean yeah Leguizamo's like five five yeah. Yeah, and, and doesn't work out or anything. It would have been way yeah. funnier though. I mean, <laughs> if that story had ended with John Leguizamo just like um kicking, kicking his ass. Kicking him in the taint. Yeah. <laughs> Cause contrary contrary to fucking Steven Seagal's fucking beliefs, Steven Seagal's not a badass. No, no not you at don't all. say. No, he's not a badass. I can't believe he's, that. He's tall, but <laughs> there's not much even in even when he was when he was in his prime, he was tall. He was thin. If you look at him, he's, yeah. he's not conditioned. He doesn't have any arms. He doesn't. Well, that's what I mean. He's, not, he has size on him, like in the sense that he towers over most yeah, other people. Yeah, and reach. But, and he has Yeah, some and he reach. has long arms. And he probably weighed close it. to 200 pounds, but it was just guts and bone. And, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and later on. and spleens and livers. Wait. <laughs> Way Seagal is now, I mean, he's got stunt doubles to walk up and down the stairs for him now, and that's not a joke. I'm never gonna let him live that down. You see, his he can't. Moving. He's got stunt doubles that just walk out on the balcony and look. Yep, yep. You go, wait, hold on, that wasn't him, and you back it up and look. He goes, that is not fucking yeah, it Steven was Seagal. Not him. And and they'll only he'll only have himself shot from like the bottom lip up. <laughs> and then he'll be going, yeah, we gotta do something. I'll go down there. I'm gonna fight the enemy. I'm gonna kill every one of them. And then the next thing you know, you see him from another angle and it's not him <laughs> <laughs> because he doesn't want you to know that that dude's as big around as a fucking truck tire. <laughs> you know, fucking, fucking huge. Poor Steve. But Seagal. yeah, we just, his we, Asian we, experience, Asian experience. We never get, to, well, we never get tired of making fun of him because he just takes himself too seriously. He's and the, people that take themselves too seriously and actually think they're badasses, they're yeah. like way more fun to make fun of. He's an amazing. He, he's an amazing man. He, he he talked his way into movies. He says he weighs a lot more than two hundred pounds. Well, yeah, he does now. Oh, like yeah. back in the old days. Back in the old days, so. he probably weighed two hundred. Just because he was so, he's real he tall, right? Tall. Six foot five, six foot four, six foot five. Yeah, like he probably weighed. Maybe he didn't weigh two hundred. He might have weighed one eighty, one ninety. Maybe probably two hundred. But he he, if you look at his arms, there's just no there's no conditioning, no muscle. There's no mass on him. Uh, most of the time when they shot him, they shot him in long sleeves. Uh, they shot him in some kind of uniform to make him look a little more. When, when he was fucking young, that's when he was in his best shape when he was doing a keto. And he's got that big old fucking samurai dress on. I'm going to call it samurai dress. Gi. He's got that big old gi on. And he looks massive and kind of like very uh, 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 robust. But it's that gi. It's all he's just tall and skinny. He's tall and skinny. He was tall and skinny in his. I wonder, if, his that, I wonder if the gi had padding in it to make it look bigger. No, it's because it, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, the I know that, but I mean, the damn things are fighting. Like, I wonder wide. if the top of it, they like poofed it out. They made a fucking bit. Jinkos look tight. <laughs> yeah. Remember Jinkos? They made <laughs> Jinkos drinker. look tight. So it made him look a lot you bigger. You just made me picture Steven Seagal in Jinkos. So, man, I say in Jinkos. So I think thanks for that. I remember that time, man. Girls down at the fucking mall and Jinkos at the fucking. Tongue rings and shit. All Remember? the little, all the little all the, mangas. Yeah, fucking tongue rings and jenkos and shit. Yeah, somebody said uh, he was in a vampire movie not too long ago. I can't remember the name of that yeah. movie, but um, terrible. He did it on shit case cinema. Terrible. I haven't sat through the whole thing, but shit case cinema did it. Yeah, so I feel like I've everybody seen it. else does everything in the movie. He's just there. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't do anything. He, um, Everyone uh, orbits around him like yeah. he's a gigantic and black he just hole. says some shit. Okay, now it's time to kill a vampire. Just watch me. <laughs> okay, you do it. Just like that. <laughs> okay, you do it. <laughs> and what's funny is that I got in, a bad knee. <laughs> evidently, in in a Steven in a modern Steven Seagal movie, he does as little work as possible. They say that he's never really on set. Um, they'll shoot a few hours of him, and then they'll kind of weave that into a movie that they shot. 
Yeah. And it's not even his voice half the time. It's and it's not even it's somebody du dubbing him over. Which explains all the different accents, I yeah, guess, he, to an extent. No, not really. <laughs> I, I can get to that. Somebody else dubbing dubbing him over, and it's not even a good um uh Seagal um in, in impersonation. I'm, I can do Seagal better than I'm actually than not entirely sure what his real voice or accent sounds like. He he becomes be whatever race he's talking to. Yeah. Okay. If you're black, he's a chameleon. If you're black, he becomes black. If if, if you're southern, he becomes southern. <laughs> if you're Italian, he becomes Italian. <laughs> if you're talking about martial arts, he becomes Japanese. All right. <laughs> he's like Bruce Lee. <laughs> yeah, be yeah, like yeah, the he's, water. He's, he's like a water. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's what he's exactly. doing. <laughs> be the Asian experience. He's the Asian. <laughs> Get inside the can. <laughs> He's got about nine million kids, a bunch of different wives. Man, I'm surprised yeah. he found that many. And people I don't think he really has a pot him. to piss in. And he talked his way in, into fucking meeting um, Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin was evidently tripped out by him. Just uh, he moves to Russia to escape some lawsuits. As far as I, as far as I know, I think he's on fucking sexual assault charges. He's running from. So he goes to Russia, and he just pestered the. Putin administration. Yeah, he just kept bothering just them until they're like, all right, and just shut yeah. up. <laughs> Evidently, Putin was amused, but uh, but he they figured out quickly that he was, he's, he's a hack. Yeah. He's a hack. Now, he's somebody asked, he did live in Japan. Yeah, uh, he did for a little while when he was younger. When he was young. When uh, he was, yeah, he was fairly young. Like real young, yeah. And 20s, maybe? He, he doesn't speak Japanese. He wasn't there very long. Um, they He claimed to have studied under this great Aikido master. That's not true. Yeah. He did learn a little, he did learn some Aikido while he was there, but it, uh, it didn't have anything to do with that grand master. He wasn't a very important student. Yeah. Um, but he could do Aikido. He was a real Aikido practitioner. The problem is, is uh, when you practice real Aikido, Aikido is not a real martial art. That's the problem. Yeah. It doesn't work. Well, yeah. Yeah. If you tried to use a keto on a mixed martial artist, you would get your ass whipped. Yeah, but yeah. very, very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I've said it before on other shows. I know we got some people that are new to the show. My stepbrother, Billy, was a fucking, when, back in high school, was like a fucking second or third degree Taekwondo black belt. I watched him kick fucking three and four dudes asses simultaneously. All right. And these are big dudes after school and shit. He could, he could, he was, he, but he was six foot one and he could just beat your ass. I watched him do it. And then I realized when I saw him beat those dudes asses, he wasn't really using Taekwondo. He just used punches. Yeah. He didn't use any of the flying kicks or the fucking. Well, and it I, and, just seems like too much. I mean, just go. Yeah. <laughs> and he would tell you, he would tell you, you know, he told me, I said, he says, yeah, but you know, all that stuff's for show and for points and for competition. The yeah. flying kicks. I mean, and if the you really want to beat the crap all, out of everybody, right? Just they're just judging you, and and but he just whipped your ass just with fucking fists, and he would kick you. He could yeah. kick you in the face while he was st standing right in front of you. Yeah, but it, the kicks usually took too long, so it was just well, punches. yeah, because like I said, your arm is right there, yeah. very near to the other yeah. person's face. Your legs way down. But there. I did see him kick a dude in the face because he punched one dude that was in front of him and then kicked the dude behind him in the face. But it didn't look like martial arts. It just looked like a dude whipping people's asses. <laughs> yeah. What it looked like to me. Well, yeah, things in so, real life and things they put in a movie. Yeah. It's like they have to do it different because it right. doesn't. So most of the time in real life, it doesn't look as cool. Now, if you took Billy and put him in, put him in a ring with a with a modern mixed martial artist, Billy would have got his ass kicked. Yeah. Because it, 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 those fights end up on the ground, and yeah. the only reason why Billy was able to do what he was doing is because he was fighting basically untrained fighters they were just untrained thugs or badasses you know what i mean but they wouldn't really have any formalized training and he was mostly knocking them out with single blows yeah so all, you know, he was sweet spotting them in the jaws and just one blow and it would knock them out and then he'd move on to the next one and you know and the guys would take a long time to recover and usually it just knocked the will right out and they didn't want to fight after being knocked out yeah so but he was good at that but Anyway, that was a big sidetrack right there. <laughs> yeah, it was. I was going to say, we still got other recording we got to do today. <laughs> Keto is when you defend yourself and your attacker. Yes, that's right. You defend yourself and your attacker. 
we don't want anyone to get hurt in yeah. this situation. You're channeling <laughs> your attacker's attack away from you into some other helpless motherfucker. <laughs> it's just bullshit. <laughs> yeah, somebody says we should do a watch party with Prime and riff the heck out of the movie. Somebody's yeah. like, we should probably get into doing that one of these days. Although I kind of worry because we say funny shit when we're watching movies all the time, but I, yeah. I always kind of worry that we're just going to sit there and not say anything yeah. funny or we're not as funny as we think we are like when we're watching the movie. I'd have to keep it packed fucking with constant fucking comments and shit and I'd be drinking and it would get way out of hand. And Well, run. no, that's good though. But well, you'd have to be careful about which movies that you picked. Which, yeah. Like I said, it would have to be something like Mystery Science Theater where, the, where it was so ridiculous um that you'd always have something to comment on yeah. you'd have to pick something that was like kind of great like not boring or anything because otherwise you'd be sitting there going yeah <sighs> when is this gonna be over all right so uh like i said we will probably do another live stream tomorrow either at <laughs> two or three in the afternoon eastern time uh it'll be either be another movie review or it might be another sidetracks which i guess this kind of was too because we always go off on various things um the love witch that was a good movie I don't know why you mentioned it offhand, but <laughs> I just saw it come up in the thing. And I was like, that was actually a good movie. It was on uh, Shutter. It's kind of a throwback, looked like a Giallo movie, but like with magic in it and stuff. It was cool. All right. So uh, we will talk to you guys again tomorrow. And uh, as always, thank you for dropping by. <laughs>